uh, nobody calls themselves like cowboy, like a cowboy, and then their name. Like, how you doing? I'm Cowboy Brian. It's like I if like you're a mafia boss things. and you're like, "How's it going? I'm Mafia Luigi." Yeah, you're like, yeah. that guy's not real. That is He's a, a major player in the mafia scene. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Hello, <laughs> and welcome to The Lyric Boys. I'm Lucian Flores, and with me, as always, all the time, 24-7, never leaving my side, Andrew Stieglitz. How's it Even going? Even though I am three hours away from you right now. Yes. Uh, this podcast, what we do is we take one of our favorite bands, and we pick 10 of their craziest, wildest, most ridiculous, most insane, funniest lyrics, and we talk about it. It's kind of loose. It's kind of silly, but it's fun. I guarantee you'll like the way you look. Ooh. In this episode, we we're talking about Modest Mouse, and when we talk about a band, you got to know that we are straight up experts. I spent like one and a half years as the music editor of my college newspaper, which really gives me with an, a, a sense of entitlement and knowledge that is unparalleled in the music industry. And Andrew, yeah. you play guitar. Well, I walk around with a guitar pick in my wallet sometimes, which <laughs> you know what that means. I am ready. Whenever the moment strikes, instead of walking around with a condom in my wallet, I walk around with a guitar pick because I am more dedicated to the guitar than to the procreation of human life. Also, when you take the guitar pick and start playing that at a party, everyone leaves and no one wants to have sex with you. Yes. Okay, Modest <laughs> Mouse. Who are they? What are they? Who Are they a band? Yes, they are a band. Modest you know would be Mouse? really funny? If, uh, okay. if Modest Mouse was called Modest Yahoo Mouse and it was Modest Mouse, but all like Jewish themed lyrics. Modest so, like, Yahoo, just to, to let the people at home know, is the rabbi, no, the Hasidic not, I don't rapper. Think he's, a rabbi. he's just, yeah, he's just a very Jewish rapper. But it'd be funny if like Modest Mouse, like instead of like float on, instead of like, I crashed my car into a cop car the other day, it was like, I crashed my yarmulke into a menorah the other day. Oh man. I have a question for you, Andrew. Yeah, yeah, go. Should we just restart the whole thing and bring no, that joke? No, no, this is good. I don't know when I'm going to end the theme song. Probably right now. Let me let me tell you who Modest Mouse is. Tell me who Modest Mouse is. I was just about to, but thank you for leading me in. Uh, so if you don't know who Modest Mouse is, they are what I would consider indie rock, alternative rock band. Been around since the 90s, still together. And if you ask Wikipedia, you say, hey, Wikipedia, what's Modest Mouse's genres? Wikipedia would say back to you, indie rock, alternative rock, art punk. I don't even know what that is. Modest Mouse is from the great state of Washington. And lead singer and guitarist is Isaac Brock. And he's been with this band the whole time since 1993. And he's got this really like shouty, angry voice that breaks a lot. It sounds like he is going through puberty constantly, but it's great. He's aggressive. He likes to write about like songs about not being sober and songs about feeling like a fuck up. Um, yeah, so my favorite album of theirs is from 1997. It's The Lonesome Crowded West, which is one of those albums that was got a 10 from Pitchfork. So, you know, if you're a Pitchfork stand out there. At, at the time or retroactively? Retroactively, got it. Yeah, big fucking dude. Fucking, yeah. this is the problem with Pitchfork, is they're always like, oh, we're cutting edge. We know what's good. And then they give albums like a zero. And then it turns out that the album is actually amazing. And they're like, no, we gave it a 10. Yeah. We did. Well, what did they give it at the time? Did they review it? I don't it at think the it was around at, at uh, the time. Uh, but then okay. Modest Mass is like big. But still, still. Modest Mass's big breakthrough album is Good News for People Who Love Bad News. Came out in 2004. The song Float On was like a big radio hit. And they yeah. kind of like had, before this, they had a real sloppy, raw, kind of gross vibe. And this album smoothed those edges. And it's a great rock album. It's, it's fantastic. But it's also the type of album that people... We're also like, oh, now Modest Mouse is like mainstream and not cool anymore. So, which of course happens whenever any 
any indie band gets success. Yeah, I, that album is so good too because it I, it keeps the uh, like the melodic. The, the like overall vibe of Modest Mouse, mm-hmm. but it just like makes them sound a little bit tighter, a little like the production on that album is so fucking good. It's amazing. It's like the quality is so clear. It's it's crystal clear, and yet it's still very much Modest Mouse. Yeah, and so Modest Mouse that was the number one album, and they've put out a couple since, so they're still around, still doing their thing, and that's all you need to know about them. Do you ever wonder what happened to those bands that wrote one great song, then disappeared forever, but you don't really care enough to do your own research about it? Well, we've got you covered. Each week on One Hit No Wonder, Nolan and Matt, that's me, take two artists who wrote one great song each, compare the artist's next most popular songs, and make them fight to the death in order to decide which is more truly deserving of the title One Hit Wonder. For all we know, Chumbawamba was the greatest band of a generation, but no one bothered to listen to their other music to find out. On this show, we'll do that listening for you. Then you can start adding more Sir Mix-A-Lot to your playlists besides Baby Got Back. You can find One Hit No Wonder every Monday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Shall we begin? We shall. Hit right. me, my baby. First, my with first, first Modest Mouse lyric. lyric of the podcast comes from their undisputable biggest song, Float On, from Good News for People Who Like Bad News. And... The song Float On is basically Isaac Brock being like, it's an anthem of like positivity. And he's like, all these crappy things happened in my day today. Like I drove my car into a cop car and the cop just like waved me off. And it's like, we got fired, but it's like, okay, that's, we both got fired. It's fine. Oh, to be white in America. Yeah. It's, it's that. It's just like, if you were to rear end a cop, they're not going to yeah. just wave you away and say like, okay, it's fine. True. Um, But the lyric that I want to specifically point out in the string of bad things that have happened to Isaac Brock in this song, he says, a fake Jamaican took every last dime with that scam. It was worth it just to learn some sleight of hand. What a positive life lesson. You get scammed out of so much money. He's probably like he's wiped out his savings. And he's like, you know what? Now I know how to play three card Monty. Yeah, that's good. Uh, have you ever been the victim of a scam? Do you think? Do you think that you've like? Give me, hit me, hit me with the yes. Hit me with a story, baby. I got a story for you. I was walking down the street one day in New York City. Oh, <laughs> New York fucking city! <laughs> New York City, probably by uh, Rockefeller Center or something. Rockefeller Center. Um, and I was like in middle school, I think, or something, and walking with friends and. This is when I learned my street smarts. But some man stuck out his hand to shake mine and I like instinctually just shook it back, which of course like I never do, but I was middle school and I was mentally weak, you know. Um just relying yeah. on my instincts. You were mentally weak. Sure. <laughs> and I stuck I You're like shook his hand weak. and then he's like, "Hey, you want to buy some candy?" <laughs> For like my sports team I was like no He's like buy some candy So I think I gave him like a $10 bill or something And he gave me like two airheads Like it was, like it was definitely like airheads were very marked up in price And I ate them disgruntedly Wow you ate the fucking airheads that a stranger on the street of New York City gave you Yes And you didn't die How do you know that you're not dead now That this is not just all some kind of weird Like he There's there's LSD (laughs) in those airheads You're gonna wake up one day and be like What? If this is a coma dream I have no ambition (laughs) But anyway uh, Yeah so (laughs) coma dream (laughs) Just stuck in a house in quarantine (laughs) Yeah just like great Going through a breakup And uh, living with my (laughs) folks in upstate New York During a quarantine Exactly what people dream about (laughs) And also, if this were a coma dream, I think I'd in, in, invent some cooler people in my surrounding myself in my life versus uh, you. Anyway, uh, so yeah, at that point, I was like, okay, life lesson learned. When a stranger just like goes to shake your hand, I, I'm evasive. I'm slippery. I, were you never I don't taught that, that happen. life lesson? You had to learn it for yourself on the hard streets of myself. New York. Anyway, about about this lyric itself, I yeah. what's so interesting to me it's. Not only was he scammed in undoubtedly in like three card Monty or some sort of card game like that, it was a fake Jamaican who scammed him. So like he got fooled guy, twice. Guy in blackface? Perhaps. Just like 
He got fooled twice. Isaac Brock got fooled by the scam and by a fake Jamaican. How, what what do you think? <laughs> do you think he was in Jamaica and like he was oh. walking around the beach and this happened, or do you think that he was in the suburbs of Washington and some guy in blackface, clearly white, with like a like one of those Rastafarian Halloween costumes, was like, okay. "Hey, man!" Basically, and, um, what's his name? Uh, Adrian Brody. Oh my god! In Saturday SNL Night Live, when he like did a <laughs> <Yeah>. terrible, <laughs> he introduced some artists and just like did this crazy, yes, like over the top. He, I think that he introduced the accent uh, and then he like danced and then it wasn't planned and he was just like kicked off SNL from that moment. Did yeah. he introduce uh, what's his name? What the fuck? Is, uh, uh, what the fuck is his name? I'm playing. Uh, it wasn't me. Shaggy. Did he introduce Shaggy? Is that why he did that? Sean Paul. Oh, Sean Paul. Oh, my God. Uh, great start to this. By the way, uh, uh, if you're wondering, pod. I've never had anything embarrassing or I've never been scammed. I've never. Yeah, once again, you ask me a question and you don't answer it yourself. Tell me, have, give me a scam I that don't, you fell I, for, except for higher is, education. Genuinely, genuinely, I'm so smart. So yeah. nobody can ever scam me. All right, here's okay. my lyric. Uh, we're lyric going to go with lyric one. One for Andrew. From the song Bukowski. Also on good news for people who love bad news. The lyric is, well, we sat on the edge of the river. The crowd screamed, sacrifice the liver. Now, I love this lyric because I wish that I could make alcoholism sound so poetic. Sacrifice like, I wish the I, liver? Yeah, like instead of just being like, I sat on the edge of the river and I fucking drank. He's I like, lit. I sat on the edge of the river and the crowd screamed to sacrifice the liver. Like the visual, the like imagery there, it's beautiful. It makes me want to sacrifice my own liver. It also, if you're just like binge drinking and someone's like, you gotta stop that, it's unhealthy. You're just like, I'm sacrificing my liver for a greater cause. My yeah. Lord, the Lord I believe in, wants me to sacrifice my liver and get turned and get lit and shake my booty on this table and do <laughs> yeah, shots. Great, uh, great justification for alcoholism, too. Like, to be like, well, it's I'm doing it because I'm sacrificing. You know, like ancient mm-hmm. civilizations used to ha- sacrifice. We need to get back to that. You need to get back to making sacrifice. sacrifices. I think it's important. I kind of view this lyric as like, it's 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 some people. I imagine like sitting on the side of a river, very beautiful, like almost like in the Amps in Amsterdam or something. Legs hanging off the side of the dock, and it's great. And then like a party boat passes by, of just like <laughs> drunk Americans, Americans, and they're just yelling, "Sacrifice the liver." So I was picturing it more of like a sweet home Alabama vibe where they're all like hmm. in the woods in Alabama oh, okay. and they're all like frat frat boys mm. and they're all and one of them probably stabs another guy's liver just because he's stupid and and then that guy's like that's not what I meant I meant drink and then he's like oh god you're bleeding we need to get to you to a hospital but the nearest hospital is 20 miles away so they put him in an ambulance or they call an ambulance and the ambulance doesn't get there in time so he's dead and now they have to mourn this guy and so in order to mourn him they say we say his favorite phrase that he always said sacrifice the liver and then it happens again the guy again stabs somebody in the liver and it's just a vicious cycle because nobody understands you just the way you know this <laughs> the south so well and not only can you turn... One can say I'm a southern redneck. Not can you turn a tale so interesting like you just did, but you can also <laughs> make it an indictment of the American healthcare system. It is yes. wild. I should run for president. Yeah. Um, Andrew Stieglitz never had anything, never been scammed for president. <laughs> yes. Do you know people would believe that too? Because apparently oh, yeah. you could just say shit now and people believe it. <laughs> You're just like, I've I never could, been I scammed. Could literally... I yeah. could literally just say that. Be like, yeah, I've never been scammed. I've never had an embarrassing thing happen to me. And people would be like, oh, he's telling the truth because you, he's running for president. You have like the family dinner conversation and they're like, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not really sure about 
either Joe Biden or Donald Trump. But have you heard about this this new candidate, Andrew Stieglitz? I hear he's never been scammed. A president <laughs> who've never been scammed? Sign me up. He'll yeah. make he'll have great deals with their adversaries. He's never been scammed. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like, well, he uh, stabbed somebody in the liver because he misinterpreted a phrase. And they're like, well. Not a scam. It's just he he does it how he likes it, telling it, doing it how it is. So speaking of drinking, from Lonesome huh. Crowded West, I'm, my second lyric is from the song Polar Opposites. And it's, I'm trying to drink away the part of the day that I cannot sleep away. Mm. If Which ever is, <laughs> there was a better message during quarantine. <laughs> yeah, it's not necessarily the funniest lyric, but it's a vibe that is, vibe. It, I think, very relatable in quarantine. Oh my, dude, for me, it is, that resonates. Like, there are days right now uh, where I wake up <laughs> and I'm just like, is it too early to have a drink right now? Is it? Is that bad? I like a little drink. What's wrong with that? What by yourself have you had a drink during quarantine before one p.m.? Before one? No, I have not. Okay. I only did that one. I only really day drank before one p.m. once in my life. By yourself. And that day is no, no, no. Okay. With, with friends. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I just thought maybe by yourself that'd be an issue. No, I don't do that. Wow. I always scammed. I've never been embarrassed I don't drink by myself I mean I drink by myself all the time Just not before 1pm <laughs> I wait until 5 I, I I just get But doesn't drink. it feel like that Doesn't it feel like Is like you have to for, Like it doesn't fucking matter Like why wait until 5 But like there's something In my like Reptile brain That's like Can't do it before 5 It's not good Would you rather Drink away your day or mm-hmm. sleep away your day drink away 100 percent. by yourself though yes okay what would you yeah, do tell me about sleeper. your perfect 24 hours of being drunk say 24 tomorrow, hours tomorrow you wake up at your normal time and you instantly get hammered tell do me you think you could be drunk for 24 hours in a row do you think well, like, like give me a normal day like you wake up at like nine you go to bed at like 12 or whatever give me that day that you're just drunk the whole time what do you do what do I do? <laughs> You're alone too. Exactly. I mean, what else is there to do? So nothing. Once again, you just What do, do you nothing. mean nothing? I'm giving I'm, I'm I'm giving innuendos here. You whack it. You take a break, a drink break, <laughs> you whack it again, you take another drink break. You, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm shocked that that's your day. <laughs> naked teddy bears online, as you do. Okay. And you hack away. I think that's the other <laughs> lyric of this song that's missing. Aside from I'm trying to drink away the part of the day that I cannot sleep away, it's also I'm trying to drink away the part of the day that I cannot sleep nor whack away. <laughs> <laughs> give, give me your second modest mass lyric Second lyric is from the song Dashboard uh, Love it From the album uh, We Were Dead Before the Ship Even Sank that was Dashboard cool. is a great song Yes uh, And this also goes off the float on vibe The very like positive vibe Because the lyric is Oh it should have been Oh, uh, sorry. Oh, it could have been, should have been worse than you would ever know. Well, then windshield was broken, but I love the fresh air, you know. So it's like, yeah, you know oh, what? Oh, it's another, yeah. Yeah, another, yeah. My windshield broke, but I love that fresh air. It's okay. If I could look at life this way, mm-hmm. I would be, I guess everyone too, but I would yeah. not be an anxious mess all the time. If you were able to look on the bright side of things? Yes. Or... Just even rationalize things Not even like the bright side Like that's a great way to rationalize things You know just to be like well Mm. this happened But and that's I feel like People you should do that Like we should be taught how to do that more And we're not we're taught like uh, We're taught like Actions have consequences Right which they do but we're not taught That like you should look at A situation as a way as a way to like learn not even learn just to be like okay well here's the positive that came out of it 
I feel like nobody like, or maybe that's just my experience. <laughs> well, I, there's a point because I agree with you. Yes, you got to be able to deal with things, right? And not just be like angry that your windshield broke. Like, But Isaac Brock at the, in this song, not only is he okay with his windshield breaking, he's like, ah, fresh air. Let's, ex- <laughs> yeah, let's that's extrapolate. Okay, that's a little delusional. <laughs> this person's life you know maybe he's walking around and his shirt is just like shrunk and there's holes in it and people are like what your clothes are ripped they're tattered you look crazy and he's like gives me more mobility and they're like (laughs) okay but you also reek your shower probably doesn't work i heard that you have like clogged plumbing and that's why you're not being able to shower and he's like Natural I like musk. This feeling, yeah, exactly. what it's like. Um, Your uh, son just came home from a mass murder spree that he went on because you're such a neglectful father. Well, population control, baby. Yeah. So there's a point. Yes, for sure. You should, or you. I don't like telling people they should do anything, but it is good to be able to process things <laughs> and yeah. not have a meltdown. When things don't go your way, but you also don't want to do the opposite and just like embrace that as your new life. Cause this guy's, this guy, that guy on dashboard is not getting that windshield replaced. I would, That's his new life. He's going to get cut. Like, I don't know that. Li- like I'm so like, uh, I'm such like a paranoid person all the time that like that way of life, even if it can it result in some horrific life events, it just sounds so appealing to me. Like, I wish I could be like, well, that's how it is. Well, friend, I think you got to move to Margaritaville. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that's where best piece of advice I have. your worries <laughs> dissipate. And you could just kick off those flip flops, sit by the beach, get sunburnt I'm to a sure crisp. <laughs> and then this be whole like, podcast well, I guess. just a scam for you to sell me on a Margaritaville <laughs> brand of condominiums. Yeah, duh. It just it sounds like a, like an old person's retirement home. If you're using, if you're listening at home, log on to margaritavillecondominiums.com, rent <laughs> a timeshare, use the code the Lyric Boys. <laughs> you'll get nothing at discount. In fact, it will double your price. <laughs> but you'll feel but better. But hey, doubled price. That means that you are helping pay for some somebody else's rent, maybe. Just yeah. like Isaac Brock would look at it. Yes. Hit me um, with lyric number. Is this number three for you? Then the third lyric. Oh, sorry. Sorry. That's not the lyric. Shit. If you folks are listening at home, you should know that this is my third time attempting to say this lyric. I have just misread it twice and I've been incredibly embarrassed. In between my misreadings, I berated Andrew Stieglitz for 15 minutes and I made him cry and I blamed him for my <laughs> own my own problems. <laughs> But I promise to you, <laughs> listeners, that I am going to say this lyric fully and correctly. I would have time. no uh, like reason to stay on this podcast if you berated <laughs> me for 15 minutes. Like, what am I getting out of this? Also, imagine being berated on Zoom for 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, just like, willingly <laughs> looking at the screen and taking it. <laughs> anyway, the lyric from the song, Bury Me With It. About the end of the world, society is crumbling, and all that jazz, and all that happens when that happens. Okay. Well, as sure as planets come, I know that they end. And if I'm here when that happens, you promise me this, my friend. Please bury me with it. I just don't need none of that Mad Max bullshit. So, basically, like, if the planet's ending, kill me. I don't want to be part of the new Mad Max worlds. Mm. To which I like agree. I don't. I don't think I would succeed too well in a Mad Max world where oil is king, and you drive oh, around. Uh, hot in, take. Like, hot take, Lucian. Some would say we're already there. That's true. Bow, 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 bow. Stieglitz's woke thought brought to you by seventh grade world history class. <laughs> Andrew Stieglitz, friend, <laughs> lover. Uh, would you want to be listen do you want to be killed as the world's ending or do you want to reinvent society in this new dystopian mad max universe you know i'll tell you this tell me that 
I would not like to be killed. I would like to continue to live. And I'll tell you why. Uh, have you ever... <laughs> what am I... I'm trying to I'm trying to phrase this in a way that's not problematic, but there's no way to do it. Have you ever been like, wow, it would be amazing if um, there were just some terrible thing to happen no, just no, no, to no, no, occupy no. my time? <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, sometimes, but we're already there. No, it's just like, the thing is this. You know how in today's world, you have to go up to a woman and convince her why you are a uh, viable candidate? Okay, yeah. In a Mad Max world, <laughs> you still have to do that. However, the stakes are so much higher, or rather lower for you, but they're higher for her because you're like, we have to repopulate now. Do you see where I'm going with this? Okay, wow. Well, um, there's a lot to unpack in what you just said. Number one to me is that it's okay if society crumbles because you'd think you would have an easier time having sex. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> in this universe you just drive through the desert you make babies in every like so, like you basically like befriend a sect of people at the end of the world <laughs> and you gain their trust and you simply have a baby with someone and leave them and then do it again creating <laughs> sewing your speed like see yes, like exactly. Jeffrey Epstein you su- no 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 not like Jeffrey Epstein. I'm not trying to fuck 12-year-olds. No, yeah, no. But you're trying to preserve your seed for... Preserve my seed for the human race. Which if is what you are Jeffrey trying Epstein to... wanted to do. Oh, is that what he wanted to do? You wanted to basically Yeah, but we're not living in a post... Like, we're not living in that possible. world. We're, we're not living... He doesn't need to do that. If you're living in a post-apocalyptic world, right, where... I mean, you need to murder other humans to eat and survive, right? I mean, you need to do some some terrible shit. I think the least that you could, the least bad thing you could do is be like, hey, I have to procreate with you now because there's only so much of us left. See, see what I'm saying? I see what, I, I very much understand what you're saying. It seems like a hassle to me. Oh, just to let have alone, sex so much? Let, just like to, to live in the Mad Max universe. And oh, if well, you yeah, wanted yeah. to, you could. There's can a just, lot of downsides. If, you, if your whole goal of living through a, an apocalypse is simply to sleep around, mm-hmm. well, baby, you can do that now. <laughs> uh, there's a lot. Yeah, but the, the thing is that if it's bad to do it, let me, let me, let me say this. <laughs> what I'm saying is a bad thing okay i'm very aware that what i'm saying is problematic and not cool however if you are in a post-apocalyptic world it is a little bit more justified because you literally are trying to preserve the human race you see what you see what i mean i just believe in human decency and no matter what stakes and and your bloodline in that post-apocalyptic world will end and my bloodline of Pure Austro Hungarian <laughs> German British Italian Jewishism pure will all pure. <laughs> continue on. I'm so many things, it's it's like too hard to keep up with it. All right. Well that was my third lyric. We learned a wow. lot. We learned too much. Please don't cancel me. It's just a joke. Kind of. Anyway, my third lyric is... <laughs> Just wanted to let you say that all. All right, what's yeah? Give me your third. Uh, actually, I have I have Bury Me With It also. What? Bury Me With It. Yeah. Uh, this, the lyric from that same song is, We were aiming for the moon. We were shooting at the stars. But the kids were just shooting at the buses and the cars. So don't drink the water. Don't you breathe the air. Oh, damn. I don't really know what that means, but it sounds violent. It does. And well, it it's, sounds it's, a little bit like the world I was describing. Well, it's the same song. <laughs> it's a, a post-apocalyptic yeah, world. Yeah. So these are your offsprings shooting at cars that you've, they're probably upset they don't have their dad around because you went around and you left. You skipped nah, make, town. That makes them stronger. I don't fucking molly coddle my kids. Um, you know, do I see them once a year, punch them in the face and say, bye, son. Going out for cigarettes. 
you make sure to loop back around every like 10 years <laughs> <Yeah>. to, <laughs> to the dystopian societies that have like started up again. Oh, by the way, <laughs> you know, I say, I say like, oh, this is what would happen if I was in a post-apocalyptic <laughs> world. There's no way, <laughs> there's no way in hell this is happening. I may be having one kid and then I'll be like, oh my God, I'll, I love him so much. I'll help you take care of him. Yeah. Or you're just like getting destroyed and killed. Or, or he, oh, yeah, I'm killed in a minute, too. Yeah. Um, don't drink the water. Don't breathe the air. Yeah, I think that he makes a good case there for not wanting to live in a post-apocalyptic world because the air and the water are contaminated and it would be a little bit hard to survive. That being said, all the more reason to procreate, keep the human race alive. Okay, is there any, I, I don't, my issue is I just don't have much to, to not, I'm confused by the lyric, I don't have I know, the lyric is really confusing, add. it's also another reason I picked it, because so much of Modest Mouse's lyrics are like, what the fuck is he talking about? Like, what, how do you, what is he talking about here? Do people understand this? Who I don't knows? know what he's talking about. Um, so my fourth Modest Mouse lyric is from the song March Into the Sea. Which is to me, it's, it's a sea shanty. It's a it's a it's an angry, aggressive, modest mouse sea shanty. Okay. From um, what album is that? From We Were Dead Before the Ship Even Sank. R.I.P. Anyway, the lyric is "Bang your head like a gong, cause it's filled with all wrong." Ah ha ha. Clang, clang, clang. So, Mm. bang your head like a gong, and the sounds that come out are ah ha ha, clang, clang, clang. My question is, if I were to take a drumstick or or whatever you hit a gong with and smash your head with it to create a beautiful music sound, my head. what, what would come out of your head? What would the sound be? The Ice Cream Man melody. Interesting. That's just always in your brain all the time, you think? Ice cream is a nonstop thought that I have. Mm-hmm. So I think that the Ice Cream Man melody would come out. I think uh, petrified internal screaming would come out. <laughs> just anxious thoughts fly out like bats. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I think a lot of uh, repressed rage would come out. Uh, Scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. What about you? What, what would come out of your head? Mm, let me think about that. What comes out of my head? I like the idea of a really disappointing um, light. Ding. So it's like you <laughs> you like take this gigantic mallet and you're like coming at my head with it. And then it smashes my head and goes, ding. I, to me, that is very funny. Are you saying that you have a very hard, thick skull that is... Uh, imp- impenetrable there's there's or there's just not not much up there that the only noise it makes is the ding <laughs> i guess yeah and then out coming coming out of my head like your anxious thoughts would just be too many fun facts about random bands and sports stats that mm. mean nothing to me just come crashing out yeah i also feel like uh if you if you hit my head like yeah you get the ice cream melody man melody you get anxious thoughts and then a lot of times you just get like static it's yeah. like <laughs> and just alcohol flows out <laughs> yeah all right let me hit you with my uh, number four. Oh yeah hit me with your fourth uh it's from the song lampshades on fire Ooh. and it goes Our eyes light up. We have no shame at all. Well, you know what I'm talking about? Shaved off my eyebrows when I fall to the ground. Hmm. I I like shaved off my eyebrows because have you ever known somebody, (laughs) mainly women do this, where they shave off their eyebrows and then draw them back in? Um, Because I have. Yeah, well, I'm trying to think of. I knew it'd be sort of a medical condition when you don't have hair. Oh no, no, no! This person, yeah, 100 did it for a look. 
Interesting. I've never seen that as like a look thing. I've only seen it as like you just don't have hair and and you put it on. And no, I didn't know this was actually. this was a, this was a very purposeful look. Uh, Interesting. And it, it was because she just like doused herself in makeup. Okay. And it was like uh, a lot of blue makeup for some reason. It's okay. A lot. It was a lot. A lot to look at. And, and uh, blue period. Yeah, and she drew in her eyebrows, and I was in middle school, and I just always found it very unsettling. Was this like a, a teacher? It was a teacher, yes. Yeah, interesting. Do you, did she have hair? Yeah. Okay. Huh. <laughs> she just like I, just, I, just, I didn't there. realize that was like a thing that happened. Yeah. I, uh, eyebrows are clearly such a big part of my face. That if uh, if they were removed, that would be shocking to me. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. That, <laughs> for all the listeners at home, I'm laughing because I put my fingers over my eyebrows and it looks funny. Yeah, that would be a great look for you. You should try it. Who's up? I'm up for my last delivery. <laughs> You're up, baby. Let's do it. In the song Cowboy Dan. In off the album Lonesome Crowded West, there's the lyric. Well, Cowboy Dan's a major player in the cowboy scene. He goes to the reservation, drinks, and gets mean. So, Cowboy Dan. This sounds Dan, like a guy who, uh, like, time traveled to the West and like didn't realize he was going to end up in the west and super does not fit there at all he's like a, you know like a hipster from like modern day williamsburg and they're yeah. like what the fuck are you doing here and he's like tries to fake his way through it he's like um i'm cowboy dan a major player in the uh, cowboy scene it's like that steve buscemi meme like how do you do fellow kids well, Cowboy Dan was a major player in the cowboy scene. And then for a couple years, he was a major player in the railroad tycoon scene. Uh, <laughs> and like, it what are you talking about? That didn't come yet. It's on the 1840. I, what does a major player in the cowboy scene do? Does he fight Probably in duels? Does yeah. he, so this guy does it all. He's a major player. Major player. Uh, drinks whiskey. Pays for it with an undescript number of coins that he throws onto a bar. Uh, it's always the exact amount, too, and he never looks. He just goes, Ugh. <laughs> yeah. Well, he doesn't. He doesn't even care because he'll just kill yeah. someone and rob their shit. But it does. I mean, nobody in the, who is a major player in the cowboy scene would ever call themselves a major player in the cowboy scene. Nobody would talk like that, except for Isaac Brock. You want to be. You want everyone to be like, oh. There goes Cowboy Dan. He's a major player in the cowboy scene. You don't want to be like, hey, what's up, boys? I'm Cowboy Dan. (laughs) Nobody calls themselves like Cowboy, like a cowboy and then their name. Like, how you doing? I'm Cowboy Brian. It's like if you're a mafia boss and you're like, how's it going? I'm Mafia Luigi. (laughs) That guy's not real. That is a a major player in the mafia scene. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Hi, I'm gang leader Dan. I am a major player in the gang scene. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. You find yourself in a uh, in a bad part of town. <laughs> <You're just> like, <laughs> you're like, what are you doing here? Yeah, where are you from? And you're like, gang leader Dan. <laughs> I lead the gang of um, <laughs> uh, Fourth and uh, Broadway b- b- player boys. I don't know. I'm a big player in the scene. I'm a yeah, I'm a pretty big player in the scene. And then they immediately kill you on the spot. Yeah. It's like when I'm <laughs> nervous they're, they're like, Stop pumping gas that. in like a small rural town and someone gets out of a pickup truck, some rifles in the back, and he like gives me a nod and I'm like, hi, I'm Lucian. I mean, uh, Dan, <laughs> I'm cow. I'm, um, you run um, up to him and shake his hands and just tell me if I'm, I kill I'm you. Rural, uh, um, I'm rural. I'm rural tough boy. Dan and I'm a major player in the rural tough boy in the farming scene. scene. The yes, I scene. venison is my thing. <laughs> venison. I feel like hunters also don't call it venison. We shoot deer. That's true. They probably. 
I don't know, man. You've had, we you've shoot them antlery on things. Hunters and you've shot on the south. I think you've got a limited. Who did I shoot on hunters and who? The south. Oh yeah. You got a limited view of the USA. You're stuck in your bubble. I want uh, to pop no, it. Uh, no. With my five inch on the first, shorts. On the first episode of this podcast, I talked about how Florida gets a bad rap and how it's a great place and I like it. And I go there a lot for vacation and I've lived there for two years of my life as a kindergartner and a preschooler. <laughs> I didn't go to kindergarten for two years. I was years. a major player in the kindergarten I, I was scene. a major player in the finger painting scene. And... <laughs> Let me tell you, them Floridians can finger paint. If they if they can paint with their fingers that quick, I don't want to know what else they can do. That's all I'm saying. Wow, it's that's a, what point do you teach a kid to go from finger paint to <laughs> paint brushes? What's like oh, the I age? You, I, I honestly thought you were gonna say <laughs> finger paint to finger blast. Do you, can you imagine? There's like a Catholic group. <laughs> Of like nuns that like in ha- half their time they spend their their time protesting outside of Planned Parenthood. The other half of their time they <laughs> protest finger painting because it only leads to other <laughs> nefarious finger activities. And they don't want to, those muscles need to stay weak forever. <laughs> A girl's like... How do you get to be so good at this? And then you're like, <laughs> check out this work of art. 100% fingers, baby. That is so funny to me. <laughs> Just sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't even say something like that. Because it's dumb to say that literally. But that is so funny. The idea that like, <laughs> you're just like really good in bed or at finger fingering. And people are like, wow, you're talented. You're like, thank you. I took years of finger painting, even like in high school when I should have been (laughs) using a paintbrush. You're in college and you're in a finger painting class with three year olds. And they're like, what are you doing here? And you're like, (laughs) you know, baby, you know. The other three year olds are like, what are you doing here? They're like, oh, I'm just here to learn about stuff and do colors. It's so fun. The parents are like, stay away from him. (laughs) And they're like, Andrew, what are you here for? And you're like, it takes a muscle. (laughs) (laughs) I'll tell you when you're older, kids. And all the moms are like, um, can I give you my phone number? I love the way you use your fingers. Paint. And the teacher's like, okay, Andrew, stop. You just ripped through the paper again. <laughs> and every, every mom <laughs> in the, <laughs> every mom in the crowd is like, whopping. <laughs> I just going to say whap. Yeah. Uh, what a... <laughs> just, stupid just how scenario. <laughs> I'm just this mat just this image of someone finger blasting basically a finger paint <laughs> and, and just like sitting in the classroom aggressively finger painting and then they're like it's not the only thing I can do and they use their tongue oh god tongue painter tongue painter sometimes you look at a painting and you're like oh what was this what's in this painting and it's like graphite paint you're like okay cool cool and it's like what's in this painting graphite paint blood and semen and you're like oh wow that's uh that's heavy (laughs) that's a lot of stuff to be what's this is this is just a stick figure what's this doing here the artist painted it with his dick (laughs) yeah that you has that ever happened to you where you see that in a (laughs) (laughs) where the i see a painting by someone's dick (laughs) by someone with someone's like Various fluids in it. Oh uh, no! Does that exist in museums? Yeah, that's happened. Oh god! This is why I don't go to art museums. <laughs> Your only museum that you like is Arby's. <laughs> Am I right? Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, Your last lyric before we off ourselves. My last lyric. Oh, it's from a song called "Doing the Cockroach." Cock- Doing the cockroach. Yes. Uh, from the album, I think that's it from Lonesome Crowded West as well. Yeah, it's great because it's also he's just shouting, "Doing the cockroach, yeah," <laughs> over and over again in the song. Yes, and the line that I so much <clears throat> relate to is, "Drunk on the Amtrak, please shut up." Another writer, he was a talker, talking about TV. Please shut up. 
And not in recent months because of quarantine, but as people who ride the train in and around New York City, I think that we can both... I don't know if you can relate to this more or if I can relate to this more because I'm on a commuter train, but holy shit, has this happened to me in my life where I, I have envisioned violent endings to the people who just won't shut up on the train do people talk to you on the train do you have a very inviting talk to me face one time actually a guy uh like i was listening to music this was years ago and he sat down next to me (coughs) and he asked me what i was listening to and i don't remember what it was and he's like oh can i listen and he took out the headphone from my ear and put it in his ear Meet cute. And I was like, what the fuck are you doing? I hate this so much. I hate it. I hate everything about this. Don't, don't do that to me. And so I fucking threw his head through the fucking glass and watched him. No, no, I didn't do any of that. I just didn't. Understand. I was like, I, I you just sat through the song being like, I don't like this. I sat through like 30 seconds and I was like, um, I'm going to just take a nap. What's we also like, 10 minutes away from my stop. But I was like, that's no. very uncomfortable, but also terrible. Depending on what you're listening to, it could be even more uncomfortable. It's like, he's like, oh, well, let he me saw, listen to I this. showed him, I showed him and he was like, oh, I like that band. And then took the headphone. Out of <laughs> but my image of this <laughs> is he's like, what are you listening to? Let me listen to it. He takes the headphone and he puts it in the ear and all he hears is, you are worthy. You <laughs> yeah. do not need to kill to find satisfaction. <laughs> you can find happiness within and not through a butcher knife. <laughs> it's just like, oh my God. You do not need to drown your victims. <laughs> that or you're just like listening to something totally out of character. And you're like, no, I, I didn't mean to. And then he puts it on. He's like... Baha men, seriously, still. <laughs> and I'm this listening isn't even... to a playlist of Baha men deep cuts. Yeah. Baha men. What a great, great band. I found this note I had written to my, like, for school. Like, I was helping my parents move out of my childhood home. And I came across some old schoolwork from, like, first grade and, and, and second grade and all that. And I was writing about playing hockey. And I was like, playing hockey is fun. Before the games, they play Who Let the Dogs Out? And that's my least favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you didn't like that song as a kid? I guess so, because in my mind, I, I love Who Let the Dogs Out now. <laughs> you know what that song is about? Yes, it's about like unattractive women, and it's yeah. very demeaning. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's like, really the, they're the dogs, according to the Baja Men. <laughs> yeah, I didn't Which, know that until probably like within the last couple of years of my yeah, life. Yeah, it's, it's wild that like all the kids were like... Who let the dog again? Because, well, because the know. music video has dogs in it, and it was in like uh, I believe it was in Rugrats in Paris. It was in everything. I specifically remember it from Rugrats in Paris. <laughs> and were dogs let out? I believe Spike, the Pickles family dog, was let out with another dog. I don't remember who. The best thing to me about music soundtracks is when they take the most literal song possible. Because can you imagine the meeting? They're like, okay, the dogs are out. We need a song for this. They're like, who let the dogs out? There's no, there's nothing else. It's just like, <laughs> we just need a song that does what voiceover does. It's like in romance movies, if like they break up for a little bit and like in like three quarters of the movie and the song's like, oh, they broke up for a little bit, but there's still 15 <laughs> minutes left. How are they going to fix this? Yeah. yeah. Or like a song in like a Tarantino movie. Where there is just like he's murdering somebody now. Ooh, he did a bad thing, but now he's driving away and he honestly looks pretty cool. Like you know how Tarantino famously used um, Steeler's wheels stuck in the middle with you as the guy was getting tortured in Reservoir Dogs and his ear was getting cut off. Yeah. Oof. The the version, the more literal version of that is just finding a song that's like cutting out your ear, torturing you. <laughs> Who cause... cut your ear off? Me. Me, 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 who cut your ear off? Yeah, that's what basically literal songs are, when you just do not have any sense of subtlety. 
who are the people that speak to you on trains? Because they're Mets fans, right? It's not well. It's not that they speak to me. It's that they they are speaking loud. Oh my god! During Mets games, uh, yeah, where, where we pass by City Field and you get like the drunk Mets fans. And I'm not. I, I lo- I'm a Mets fan, but uh, some of those people make me want to root against the Mets <laughs> because they're so obnoxious and. There, there have been times where, like, it's a quiet rush hour train. And rush hour trains are, especially after work, very quiet because, like, it's later mm-hmm. in the day. And, like, the commuters are just, like, sleepy from a long day at work. And you get these, like, absolutely fucking shit-faced, uh, like, baseball fans. And they are, like, absolutely hammered at, like, 6 p.m. on a Wednesday. And you, they're screaming at the top the of their time. lungs. And what... Well, like there were a few times where they got off the train and the train like applauded them leaving, which was pretty good. Like every like the riders <laughs> applauded them. I think that happened like once or twice. Have you ever seen anyone barf on a train? Mm. <laughs> no, I haven't seen anyone barf on a train, but I have been on trains home from the city at like 3 a.m. drunk where like I, one time there was a couple and the girl was like they were both really drunk, but the girl was yeah. like super drunk. and She just goes to the guy. I swear to God, I'm going to shit. I'm going to shit right here. I swear to God. And he's like, you have to hold it. You have to hold it. And he's like, I can't. I'm going to shit. And I, I got up and I moved cars. I was like, nope, this is not happening right now. I had a situation where I was on the train late when, or not even that late, but just suddenly the car started smelling and everyone looked and there was just the seat with like a puddle of brown on it. And even the person like two seats over was like, what? Like it just suddenly that appeared out of nowhere. <laughs> That's the opening <laughs> to if, like a monster movie. And like, was like an what? Alien what? And we all left the, the train because it was very smelly. Yeah. The person um, two seats over was also like, huh, how did that get there? That looks sure like they- somebody diarrhea in their pants. <laughs> and it looks like it was because of the Taco Bell that they ate 35 minutes ago. Huh? Anyway, we should get out of here. And it's like, listen, real New Yorker commuter Dan, we can see the trail leading to that seat that you're sitting in. <laughs> it's falling out of his pants as he's getting up. He's like, everybody, move to the other car. And they're all like, we can see it. You're still shitting. And he's like, you can still hear him shitting. And they're like, and he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. That's like that Derek comedy sketch. You ever see, the, you know, the Derek comedy sketch I'm talking about? I gotta watch it. I just queued it up. I gave you the entire, that was the entire (laughs) sketch. Amazing. Uh, That's five modest mouse lyrics from you. That's five modest mouse lyrics from me. That means that we're done here. Wow. So, people, fans, aficionados of the Lyric Boys, I'll tell you how to follow us. We want you to go to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Look up at the Lyric Boys. You can email us at lyricboyspod at gmail.com. We encourage you to email whatever. Like, subscribe, leave a review. Leave a five-star review. We'll come to your house post-quarantine and give you a big hug if you want that. Tell your friends about the pod. That's it. That's it.